We are a film institute. I'm just saying we because I'm imagining that I'm a part of FTII. Okay, I wish I was, I'm not. That is a relevance of a film and television institute which has a certain kind of social and creative ideology rather than merely a technical institute. So yes, I think that some institute, some institute which in addition to teaching you the mechanical grammar of cinema, there has to be an institute which teaches you more than that, which tells you why you're making a film, which tells you why are films important or a certain kind of films are important. Why are we human? What is the meaning of us being human and how can we show it in a film? You know, all these are parts of an aesthetic ideology. So there has to be an institute in every society which has to be like this. I think it's, it's not even necessary. It's, it's, um, it should be natural. I think every film uh, society or culture that makes very successful commercial films also reserves a very deep entrenched circle which is left for films which are not just for commerce but for something else a cultural statement the Americans do it very sharply very very sharply they will send us their biggest trashy Hollywood summer spectacle at the same time we'll be slaving for all the Oscar winners Europe tries to do it right we as a big film society need to have our big Bollywood extravaganza it's absolutely fine but if we don't have our killers and our masams and our lunch boxes then we will not be taken as a cultural total by the world in general you know what I'm saying now unfortunately to make the killers and the masams and the anegodida dan and the uh, lunch boxes for them to be nurtured we'll have to have a kind of an environment which is best exemplified by FDI. The environment of these kind of films, even today, amongst the filmmakers who are not from FDI, like me, comes from FDI. I don't think direct mailing shiny packets about India is as effective as having a definitive creative core of Indian films. That will represent the India shining even better than any direct mail packet of documents and brochures. Right? So a good thriving independent film culture is a good brochure for India. If an aesthetic and a creative institute has to survive as an aesthetic and creative entity, it cannot be told what is good, what is bad. You cannot have moral judgments when you're teaching an art and that can sometimes concentrate on things which you think are politically wrong, which you think are morally wrong, which you think from your point of view. But that's required. That is what is required because that's why that institute is trying to make you into people who ask questions, who make films to criticize something, who make films to improve something. If that kind of an institute which teaches you to do all these things is given an agenda, then which is not a creative agenda, then it's very, very bad. That means that somebody is out to finish that institute. The people within that, uh, you know, bigger shortlist have made utterances like nationalism will be taught in the film institute or something to do with patriotism. I don't remember the exact things, but I've, I'm given to understand that these kind of statements have been made. If they have been made, then they are patently inimical to any kind of an education institute. If you're trying to put extremely outmoded and shallow things like nationalism and morals into that kind of an aesthetic uh, requirement, you're killing it entirely. You cannot do it. But, uh, a film institute will be very dangerous if it tries to teach nationalism and patriotism and how to improve yourself and all that. It will not make films anymore. It will do something else. And that's, I find that dangerous. I find that idea very dangerous. We are a creative institute. It's an essential in our curriculum not to have any kind of political influence, whichever side, whichever hue, whatsoever. If privatization means that uh, 
a lot of creative people, you know, capable of representing India to the world stage, are left out of film education, then it should not be privatization. I think the question that we are asking is that who knows some inarticulate poor, uh, you know, uh, boy in Kerala is the most sublime editor in the whole world and he needs to come to some institute and learn editing and at least be given a chance. To that effect, I definitely, definitely think that that has to be there as the basic lowest common denominator of an institute like FTII, regardless of how it's funded. Listen, funding is complex. Somebody can make a successful funding scheme for FTII even while achieving this aim. What do we want the funds for? We want the funds for that guy in Kerala who could be the world's biggest editor, the best editor. We need to figure a way out for that. 